Good, up, good morning to Freeman Heights Baptist Church family and to all who are viewing by way of Facebook or YouTube. We are so grateful and thankful that God has given us another great privilege to be able to come and worship and praise his holy name and to preach and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are going to continue in our sermon series in 1 Peter and we're going to uh, begin with the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 19. First Peter 4, 12 through 19. When read from the New American Standard Version, it sounds like this. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you, but to the degree that you will share the sufferings of Christ, Keep on rejoicing so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because of the spirit of glory of God rest on you. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or thief or evildoer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed but he is to glorify God in his name. For it is the time for judgment to begin with the household of God, and it begins with us first. What will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it would be with difficulty that the righteous is saved, what will become of the godless man and the sinner? Therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God shall entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, but most especially the doers of his holy and inspired word. Let God's people say amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we've come before you today again, thanking you for the privilege, thanking you for allowing our eyes to open this day and see a day that we've never seen before. Hide me, your humble servant, behind the cross. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. One of the things that I learned early in life through my experiences in school and life is there are always tests. In our text today, Peter is reminding the people of God that suffering is a test to reveal where we are in our relationship with God. I can recall growing up in school, no matter what grade we were in, there was always some test. And I've always wondered why were there so many tests? Well, tests are designed to assess how much we have mastered of the material. A test lets us know where we are, how much we do know, and how much we need to learn how much we need to grow. So my brothers and sisters this morning, we'll take a few minutes to talk about the suffering is your test. If you will recall in the message from last week, 1 Peter 4.11 says, whether we speak or whether we serve, do all to the glory of God. And then he leads into the text for today and says, beloved, a term of endearment. And he says, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you. The first bullet, the first nugget that I realized when reading this text is we should not be surprised when we suffer or are persecuted. It should not catch us off guard. It should not be a surprise. It should not be uncommon for the Christian to understand that it is a part of the Christian walk to in fact suffer. Don't be surprised when you suffer. And in 2 Timothy 3, 12, it says, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ will be persecuted. It says will be, not might, not may, but will be. It is going to occur, so we should not be surprised. And when we look at the context of 2 Timothy, as Paul writes to encourage Timothy, Paul is in his second Roman uh, confinement. 
He's in his second Roman confinement. He realizes that the time of his departure is at hand, realizing that he does not have much time left. And he responds to encourage Timothy by saying, you will be persecuted. Oh, I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but is that a really encouraging word to know that you are going to be persecuted for the Christian? We're going to see in our text that we should be encouraged. In fact, not only should we be encouraged, but the Bible says we should rejoice. Well, that's what Paul said to Timothy. But what does our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ say about this? Matthew 16, 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any one of you wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus, him, Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior said, you must deny yourself and you must take up a cross to follow me. And Jesus, in that 16th chapter of Matthew, we need to understand the context. Jesus had just told his disciples that he was going to be die and persecuted and, and crucified. Peter, who had already made a confession of faith that Jesus Christ was the son of God, says, oh, God forbid it. And Jesus says, don't be a stumbling block, Satan. Get behind me, Peter. And then he leads in to tell his disciples that passage that says, you must take up your cross and follow me. My brothers and sisters, all of us have a cross to bear. And so let me move on to my second point. Let's talk about uh, you need to suffer for the right reason. You need to suffer for the right reason. It says right there in the text, and there's a laundry list, we can be suffering for the wrong things it says you could be suffering for, if you are a murderer. He went through the list. Thief, evildoer, troublesome, meddler. I hope I didn't step on anybody's toes, but he said, you know what? We can be suffering for the wrong reasons, but, 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 but we need to understand that we should suffer for the right reason. And that's what Peter was encouraging the people of God and you, my brothers and sisters, that if we're going to suffer, we ought to suffer for the right reason. I've often heard it, and I don't recall who originated, but it was not me that said, you know, there's a difference between crosses and crops, and let it be a cross and not a crop. And so what does that mean? Well, Jesus said, pick up your what? Cross and follow me. But where does the crop come in? Oh, I'm glad that you asked. In Galatians 6 and 7, it says, do not be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Do not be deceived. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. An agricultural, agricultural uh, uh, saying that tells us whatever we put in the ground is what's going to come up. If we put in some unrighteous things, some unruly things, and he goes on to that list talking about the things that we can plant that are not wholesome, the things that are not righteous and pleasing in the sight of God, we can suffer for those things. So we want to make sure that when we're going through suffering, that we are suffering for Christ's sake. And so when we're going through suffering, and my brothers and sisters, we should never judge someone else on when they're going through suffering. Because suffering can come and persecution can come because God is trying to do some things in our life. He is either correcting us or he is perfecting us. He is correcting us or he is perfecting us. A couple of examples of that is uh, Jonas. You're very familiar with the story. He's supposed to go to Nineveh and preach. He refuses to do that. Goes against the will of God and the plan of God. He ends up in the, in the belly of a big fish for three days. He repents, comes to himself, and ends up going to Nineveh to preach the gospel. That was a correction. Brother Job was a righteous man, but yet he suffered tremendously. And we are told in the Bible that he suffered and he was righteous. It was a perfection. He was perfecting. So my brothers and sisters, we need to understand when we see somebody going through, it's not our position to be judgmental because it could be a correction. It could be a perfection. 
But for us as believers, we want to make sure or as best as we can to make sure that we're suffering for the right reason because we are following Christ. And the Bible told us right there that if we're following Christ, people will revile against you. People will say mean things will come against you because you are a follower of Christ. And if you receive persecution, if you receive suffering, if you lose friends, if you lose a job or whatever thing comes against you because you stood for Jesus Christ, the Bible says we should rejoice in the fact that we are suffering with our Lord and Savior. So I would just ask yourself for those who are going through some trials and tribulations in the, in the middle of this pandemic, ask yourself the question if you're suffering or if you're going through some things. Here's a couple of questions we can always ask ourselves to determine, is this a cross or is this a crop? First of all, we should ask ourselves, do I have unconfessed sin in my life? Do I have unconfessed sin in my life? You see, we can sin and nobody know but God. You know, we can put on a good facade, a fake front, like everything is right, that we're so holy, that we're so righteous. But God knows our thoughts and our deeds when nobody else does. And the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins if we will confess them. So the first thing, if you're going through something, persecution or suffering, Ask yourself, examine yourself, test yourself, and ask the question, do I have unconfessed sin in my life? And if you do, and if you do, fall down on your knees and ask God for forgiveness with a repentant spirit and start doing the will of God. Don't just stop committing sin, but start doing the will of God. True repentance. And then the other thing that we should do in the midst of our suffering is ask this question. How can I bring glory to God in the midst of this situation? How can I bring glory to God in the midst of this suffering? And he tells us, rejoice. Rejoice. Exalt God in the midst of our suffering. Rejoice in the fact that God is working in our lives. Oh, you might be asking, how would that bring glory to God? My brothers and sisters, I just want to let you know that everybody, everybody can have the right spirit of attitude of praise and rejoicing when things are going well in their life. But oh, it takes a special empowering of the Holy Spirit and a right relationship with God to understand that when I'm suffering, I still need to live a life that brings glory and honor to him. I know I've had some pity parties in my life, but I pray to God that I've come to my senses, come away from that pity party and realize that God has been so good to me that in the midst of my suffering, why should I not suffer and I should glorify God. Rejoice that this too will be over one day. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's look at this. Not only do we want to, we should not be surprised when we suffer. We should suffer for the right reason. We should live a life that's pleasing to God. But we need to understand that our suffering is refining. Our suffering is this process, this sanctification of being perfecting. And when I first read this text, I was thinking about this thing about this judgment thing. And I want to make this real clear that everyone, everyone is, 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 is received and awarded, rewarded because of their deeds. For as Christians, for Christians, we are saved by our faith, but we will be rewarded according to our deeds. To our deeds so when we when we need to understand that right now when we are suffering while we are going through this thing of perfection God is working on refining us making us molding us shaping us into his image he is in fact the potter and we are the clay we're being molded and, and shaped he's refining us and what I I love uh uh, Dr. Thomas Constable says, Christians suffer now and glory later. 
The non-believer has glory now and suffer later. Christians suffer now and have glory later. The non-believer has glory now and will suffer later when they appear before the judgment seat of God. And then, just as a word of encouragement as I close, there's a passage of scripture in Acts 14, 22. It says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, through many tribulations, we must enter into the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, in that Acts, that 14th chapter, he is in Lystra. He's been persecuted, beaten, left for dead. And he says those words. And you could say, well, that's just a one-time instance. But all throughout Paul's ministry, he suffered. Second Corinthians 11, he gives us a laundry list of his suffering. He talked about how he had been jailed, how he had been close to death, how he had five times been beaten, 30 time, 39, uh, uh, with 39 lashes, three rods, he had been beaten, he had been stoned, shipwrecked, hungry, thirsty, abandoned. But yet this man continues to tell us to be glory and honor to God. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that one day, we will appear before our God. And when we do appear before him, we want to know we have served in a right way that's pleasing to him. Matthew 16, 27 says, the son of man is coming in his glory with his angels and will then repay every man according to his deeds. It's so amazing that in 1624, he said, pick up your cross. And three verses later, he tells us we will be glorified and rewarded if we remain faithful. I'm praying you would remain faithful to God through your suffering and through your lifestyle that you would bring glory and honor to him. But if you're here, if you're listening to my voice and hearing the sound of my voice and you don't have a relationship with God, I pray that you would give your life to Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and shed his blood so you could have that relationship. And for those of us who are followers of Christ, I would encourage you to do a self-examination. And if there's unconfessed sin, right there where you're sitting or standing or whatever posture you're in, pray and ask God to forgive you and have your mind made up that you're gonna live for God. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we are so very thankful. Even in the midst of suffering, we recognize that you love us and are continuing to work on us and shape us and mold us through this process of sanctification. It is our prayer that you would be glorified through it all. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.